Okay, Ash, what's next? Many fans of George Miller have wondered about his failed Justice League movie that almost made it to filming before being abruptly canceled before a single frame of film. And now, thanks to a tip from a casting call looking for small parts and extras on Justice League Part 1, the film's credits list none other than George Miller as a producer, alongside Batman vs. Superman producers Charles Roven and Deborah Snyder, who will also be back for Justice League. Miller was once rumored to take the helm on Men of Steel 2, but no news on that front has come to fruition. Jeanette Byersell, George Miller, as a producer on Justice League. Hmm, seeing as I was the one who started that Man of Steel rumor, I seem to be correct in something, which is just nothing, really. The Oracle um, strikes yeah, again. Yeah, I guess I was right about something. Uh, I think, uh, you know, he was meeting with DC Comics and talking about this stuff. That much I do know. And it didn't work out. He's doing something else. Maybe it's another Mad Max film. Maybe it's something else. Maybe he's just producing the next Mad Max movie. And maybe he's going to move on to maybe doing something like The Flash. Or who, kn who knows what he's going to do. But he's getting his hands in back. Back into the pie, just like he was originally going to direct Justice League Mortal back in 2008. The writer's strike happened, and that movie then didn't happen. He's getting his hands back into the DC Universe. And just as a director, just as a producer this time. So I think it's great. I'll buy it. Christian, getting your wild out? Yeah, I buy it that he's, uh, obviously, I mean, look, he's coming off of, I was talking to a bunch of people last night that hadn't even seen Mad Max, and just because of everything that it did just for the Oscars, they're like, oh, sh should I see Mad Max? Are you kidding me? It's one of the best movies of the year, and what he did, it's all him, man. It was all him. Obviously, he had an amazing team, but it was his vision that he was able to do that, and because he is now being a producer on the Justice League, yeah, I want to see him do something else. I think it's a good way for them to get him involved a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he can take some past ideas of the stuff that he worked on if it, if it works with the vision that they're looking for with the DC Cinematic Universe. It's great, so how could you not buy But real, real quick, uh, I want to hear your point. Then I wanted to talk oh, about thanks. I wanted to ask you something about the, the we didn't get into it, about the pre-sales with, uh, with the Batman and Superman stuff too. Sure, we'll get to that right yeah, after. Yeah, I, yeah, I forgot, I forgot you didn't Buy it. Christian, no. back to you. Uh, I look, I, I think George, not yet. I, George Miller's a guy that you get excited about any project he's involved in simply because he's George Miller and he made such a phenomenal movie this past year with Mad Max Fury Road. All the Academy Awards and all that stuff, it's cherry on top of a great dish that we all got to enjoy. It was such a visually stunning movie. I wonder if him being a producer on this, if that, because Zack Snyder is such a visual guy anyway, it's like, will that, will, will that be like a LeBron going to Miami situation where it's just more good players together or will it be too many cooks in the kitchen that are all trying to settle on what we need for this one shot. Schnapp, as far as being a director and working with other producers and stuff, I know that the director generally has the final say, but when you bring on a George Miller, are you expecting him to help out the director or just kind of give some ideas and then back off? It, it, it depends on what the project is. If you're uh, producing and directing and then you bring, in, uh, bring on other producers, they're there to help. They're there to like, you know, throw some ideas at you, bounce off, you know, hey, what about this? What about that? You know, and I think George Miller is that kind of guy. He's a team player. I mean, he basically storyboarded that entire Mad Max Fury Road film with Brendan McCarthy, an amazing illustrator and artist. And they basically kind of like visually came up with a story. Brendan McCarthy has vision. He, he gets story credit, but he visually just kind of drew out every single shot. So I think someone like George Miller, who's visually an, an amazing genius, you want that guy to be a producer on your film because he'd, be, he'd come in and be like, hey, here's this layout. He'd be like, well, what about this shot? Did you think about adding that? You'd be like, thank you. So I think it's a great idea. And now for breaking news, we go to the director of development, Christian Harloff. Well, I was I was just wondering if you guys had any thoughts on the pre-sales. The pre-sales went for Batman v Superman. We didn't talk about it at all. Um, right. So I think that they're projecting it to do 140 Right. Opening weekend. Do you think that it's it's you? Look, yeah. you're Nostradamus here. You are, are you going over over two hundred? Over two hundred. Yeah. So I'm I am not going to doubt you anymore. I wouldn't have gone that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still I'm I'm still I'd probably be wrong going against Schnepp here, but I think it's going to do about one seventy. This year proved, though, or last year I guess now proved that we we really don't know what we're measuring anymore when it comes to pre-sales. Right. I mean, I don't know what the pre-sales were for Jurassic World. We certainly know that they were record numbers for The Force Awakens. We saw how that turned out out as well did anybody know before fast and furious came out or furious 7 whatever the hell that movie was called that it was going to do that well not just repeat business but that opening weekend number so look it's great i'm 
happy that they're already projecting a number that high. I think that's only going to pick up. And, and you know, you, you would hope that a movie picks up momentum going into it, whether it's Gods of Egypt or Batman versus Superman. You want people excited about the product that's about to hit theaters. So I think once we get Batman versus Superman, the true fever is going to set in that week and people buzzing about it. So maybe it's going to go well above that projected number. I bet two million, 200 million right on the nose. Wow. I think it's going to be just perfect. It's really, I'm looking at the live chat. And people are throwing in their predictions. There's a, it, it's ranging between about 160. Some people have 220. The reason why I think it's going to be a little harder to hit the 200, so it's also two and a half hours yeah. long. Uh, that's I, a long movie. I, I was going to throw that in, too. The, the runtime limits the amount of movies right. that you can have per day. So that could actually hurt it a little bit as far as being able to get over that 200 right. million uh, mark. By the way, I was uh, correct with uh, F uh, Furious 7. I predicted over 150 million. No, I don't believe that ever happened. Someone it's, needs to find go that. go back and watch the movie. Talk. I know you, hit, you definitely hit Deadpool and you hit yeah. Force Awakens. And Furious 7 sure. I did as well. well I, and I, Guardians. I, By the way, whatever. It's just a couple we'll movies. We'll see. But this, this one, you might, it's not even a big deal, guys. The two and a half hour <laughs> might might hurt your streak no, here, I, though. I, I completely agree. I'm just, I think it'll it'll do 200 just because of word of mouth. Yeah. And every single, it's just selling out everywhere. Hey, guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire our episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.